modern gaming landscape is an utter embarrassment of riches. Enough that there's just not enough time to play all the great games out there. Even accepting that though, these 10 acclaimed video games all suffered some severely sharp drop-offs after launch, with the majority of players suddenly putting each game down and just never returning to it. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 great video games everybody just stopped playing. Number 10, Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 is an utterly mesmerizing achievement from Rockstar. It's an intoxicatingly rich Western masterpiece, which basically dares players not to pour hundreds of hours into its mind-bogglingly immersive open world. And yet, PlayStation Trophy data indicates that there came a point where players en masse just fell off the game and they never got around to finishing it. Only 29.8% of players had popped the trophy for finishing the Arthur starring main portion of the game, while the John Marston-centric epilogue mustered just 20 6.4%. Even accepting that Red Dead Redemption 2's campaign can easily take over 50 hours to complete, it's shocking that barely one quarter of those who bought the game stuck with it long enough to see the end. Even though the cinematically driven campaign isn't particularly difficult, it was likely a matter of fatigue which prevented so many from reaching the end, with many having their fill of Rockstar's sprawling open world before they could bring the story to a close. Number 9. Sifu Unlike Red Dead Redemption 2, beat-em-up Sifu's sharp player drop-off can be very obviously attributed to the game's enormous decree of challenge, with its take-no-prisoners approach ensuring that less persistent players would probably have noped out quickly. Though almost 90% of players made it through the prologue, where admittedly dying isn't possible, that number took a steep tumble soon thereafter. 58.7% of players have beaten the first of the game's five main chapters, but only 32.8% got to the end of the the second chapter and defeated boss Sean. This isn't remotely surprising given that, as anyone who's played much of Sifu will know, Sean represents a significant difficulty spike, as clearly caused less determined players to bounce off the game entirely. This is backed up by Steam metrics, which show the concurrent player count dropping by almost 85% within a month of release. And if you're wondering how many players actually made it to the end of the game, on PlayStation just 15.1% popped the gold trophy. Number 8. Halo Infinite while Halo Infinite's single-player campaign wasn't a winner for everybody, the multiplayer suite launched to wide acclaim. More to the point, Microsoft's decision to launch it as free-to-play should have ensured an incredibly healthy player base in perpetuity. Though Infinite peaked with an impressive 272,586 concurrent Steam players shortly after launch in November 2021, 343 Industries couldn't keep a hold of them. Barely six months after launch, it had shed 98% of its peak player base. Even accepting that Halo Infinite is an Xbox title first and foremost, it's likely that the numbers aren't hugely dissimilar on that platform. As for why this player exodus happened, well, you can point to the disappointing lack of content since launch, as well as the underwhelming progression system, intrusive monetization, and abundance of server issues. What should have been a slam dunk for Microsoft has instead indicated that Halo's luster as a premium AAA FPS franchise has basically evaporated. Number 7. Horizon Forbidden West Horizon Forbidden West can certainly be a meaty behemoth of a game if you want it to be. But to the same token, if you stick to the critical path, the story campaign can be pretty comfortably cleared in about 20 hours. And so it's surprising that trophy data reveals a mere 29.8% of players have actually beaten the game's final mission. Well, it would be surprising if not for the fact, as anyone who's played the game to completion will attest, the final boss fight against Tilda Spectre Prime is a major pain in the ass. The battle marks a massive difficulty spike compared to the rest of the game, and while the chapter completion rates leading up to the final fight were already pretty low, that less than one third of players have beaten a relatively short single player AAA game is pretty shocking. Number 6. Fall Guys Fall Guys was nothing if not a video game that came out at just the right time. The fiendishly addictive Battle Royale title releasing in August of 2020 during the height of the pandemic. With players worldwide confined to their homes, Fall Guys soared to a peak player count of 172,213 on Steam within days of release, ensuring it was a far greater success than developer Mediatonic ever could have imagined. Yet this also meant that Mediatonic evidently didn't have a prepared strategy for retaining such a huge 
huge player base. And so, with players growing tired of the existing map rotation, the player count plummeted within a matter of months. Three months after launch, Fall Guys was down to 23,148 concurrent players, having lost over 86% of its launch peak. And though the game enjoyed a brief spike of interest when it went free to play in June of 2022, three months later the numbers were back to their previous levels. As a response to this, Mediatonic reduced the player count per match from 60 to 40, in an attempt to cut down on wait times. At present, the game is barely floating above 2,000 concurrent players and slowly declining declining, making it likely the number will dip below 1,000 before the end of the year. Given that Full Guys inherently needs a larger player base to accommodate its highly populous matches, without some major changes it seems inevitable the party game's days are sadly numbered. Number 5. Returnal Returnal is one hell of a roguelike shooter, and one whose AAA production values helped it appeal to even those who generally steer clear of the genre. This may partially explain then why so few players actually made it far in the game at all. Just 37.8% of players have beaten Frike, the game's first boss, though that number drops substantially more for the second boss, Ixion, whose completion rate is just 26.2%. Yet the majority of those who did beat Ixion actually managed to beat the three remaining bosses, whose completion rates are 19.4%, 17.9%, and 14.3% respectively. Basically, if you got stuck on Ixion, you probably dropped the game in short order, but if you made it past that boss, it was more likely than not you persevered long enough to beat the game. The Steam player count seems to reflect this, where within two weeks of release it had lost almost two thirds of its number. While Returnal is far from an inherently long game, the high level of difficulty seemingly had more casual-minded players fleeing in droves. Number 4. Diablo 4 Diablo 4 is a great game that Blizzard seems hell-bent on making players think otherwise. As brilliant as the gameplay fundamentals are, players have taken umbrage with the underwhelming post-game content, changes made to balancing since release, lack of online matchmaking, frustrating UI, and much more. Despite the game grossing an eye-watering 666 million within days of launch, there are indications that it's already in the midst of a slow death. While player count stats for Battle.net aren't readily available, the most telling statistic might be that within three months of launch, its Twitch stream viewership has dropped a staggering 99%. For comparison, Baldur's Gate 3, which launched just weeks after Diablo 4, had almost 10 times the Twitch viewership at that time, suggesting that Blizzard's polarizing approach to keeping the game alive has resulted in players en masse dropping off. Given that Diablo 4 was built as a live service title with seasonal content intended to maintain player engagement for years, it's pretty bleak that so many have lost interest less than one year after launch. Number 3. The Division even if it didn't quite live up to the tectonic hype, The Division was nevertheless a thoroughly entertaining shared world shooter brought to life by its gorgeous open world and tight gunplay. Yet given that the core campaign could be cleared in around 25 hours and Ubisoft didn't have much in the way of meaningful post-game content to keep players engaged, it's little surprise that the player count dipped from a stunning 2.1 million launch peak to just 143,000 within three months of launch. The Division simply didn't boast enough compelling content to keep players coming back, and the already repetitive core gameplay loop likely didn't help retention at all. The game quickly faded into the ether, all while another Tom Clancy title released a few months prior, Rainbow Six Siege, impressively managing to grow its player base enough that it only reached a player peak in 2021, with an impressive 201,053. Number 2. Starfield Love it or hate it or find it thoroughly okay, Starfield was unquestionably one of 2023's most anticipated games, and unsurprisingly performed extremely well upon launch. Within days of release, Bethesda's sci-fi RPG peaked with 330,723 concurrent players, easily surpassing Skyrim's all-time peak of 287,411. And while it was expected that the game would keep players engaged long-term as per their prior titles, 
that didn't pan out. Even with rock solid reviews and plenty of praise for its immersive qualities, Starfield's world and characters just didn't retain players like the studio's very best titles did, with the Steam Play account falling off a cliff in the weeks after launch. By this past February, less than six months after release, Starfield's concurrent player count had dropped under 9,000, marking a devastating 97% drop from its peak. To rub salt in the wound, Skyrim's player count still hovers around 30,000, well over a decade after launch, indicating that for all its achievements, Starfield simply lacked the expected Bethesda magic which translates into long-term staying power. Number 1. The Finals Free-to-play FPS The Finals launched this past December to solidly positive reviews from critics and general players alike, and peaked with an impressive 242,619 concurrent players on Steam within days of release. This seemed to indicate the possibility that The Finals would be the new viral word-of-mouth hotness, and though the player count began to dwindle in the new year, it was still sitting at over 100,000 concurrents well into January. But the player count took a noticeable dip in late January. January, falling below 50,000 for the first time and marking a more than 80% drop from launch. Though some players have pointed to a lack of content and frustrating matchmaking as possible explanations, there's also the fact that we shouldn't be ignoring Pal World released on January 19, mere days before the finals numbers took a sharp dip. With Pal World reaching an eye-watering peak of over 2.1 million players on January 27, it's reasonable to deduce that it took a a sizable portion of the finals players with it. As of early March, the games dipped below 10% of its peak player count for the very first time, indicating that without some major changes, it's on a not-so-slow march to its demise.